morning. It's Thursday, September 26. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Wax Wake Up. I'm Natasha Sweet. A House panel investigating the attempts made on former President Donald Trump's life is set to hold its first public hearing today. We're at a pivotal moment in the history of the Secret Service and at a pivotal moment in the history of our country. This comes as the Secret Service faces intense congressional scrutiny over the incidents. The bipartisan panel of seven Republicans and six Democrats will unveil its findings after two months of investigating activity. The paradigm shift will be a driving force to move the Secret Service from a state of reaction to a state of readiness. And the vision is for the Secret Service to be more agile with the ability to escalate protection to the highest levels for numerous protectees for undetermined periods of time. Back on July 13th, a gunman was able to climb atop a nearby building and fire shots at a Trump rally crowd in Butler, Pennsylvania. While the task force is also now investigating a second alleged assassination attempt on Trump, the hearing is expected to focus mainly on the incident in Pennsylvania. House Speaker Mike Johnson faces an uncertain path when it comes to retaining his role in leadership. I wasn't able to schedule a meeting with Zelensky this week because I had a very busy one, as you all might have uh, noticed. Some Republicans have expressed disapproval over how he handled a government funding fight this month. Took the initiative and passed a clean, narrow three-month CR to prevent the, the Senate from jamming us with a, another bloated bill. Congress passed a short-term extension in government funding on Wednesday, temporarily avoiding a shutdown. But the measure passed with more Democratic votes than Republican. Some lawmakers are doubting Johnson has the votes to remain Speaker should Republicans hold on to their House majority next year. The criticism comes after the short-term spending bill passes in a 341 to 82 vote. All no's were cast by Republicans. Ex-Speaker Kevin McCarthy was ousted for relying on Democrats to pass a continuing resolution. Governor Tim Walz held just one televised debate during his last election. It's pretty obvious to us that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance do not share our values in any way. It offers several clues as to how things might go when he takes on Senator J.D. Vance in next week's vice presidential showdown in New York City. Well, there's a clear contrast here. My entire career, I've trusted women to make their health care decisions. I don't believe anybody who sits in this office should come between them. Scott was very clear in May. He mocked me and said, no kidding, Sherlock. I'm running for governor to get things done. We're going to ban abortion. Things got heated more than once. Scott Jensen, a former Minnesota Republican state senator, even accused Walls of tossing word salad with no substance. Walls won in the left-leaning state with 52% of the vote to Jensen's 45%. Analysts say Walls has become more liberal in his policies and his debate style more aggressive, especially when it comes to the topic of abortion. Questions about the COVID-19 pandemic haunt Walls as he even set up a hotline for people to turn on their neighbors for violating lockdowns. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday morning. For more stories, be sure to head on over to our website and give us a follow on social media so you can stay in the know and all that's trending in politics. Have a great day.